over England, free schools are innovating and expanding choice in education. The free school programmes allowed us to start with a blank sheet of paper and for a school like ours, that's really, really important. New state schools open to all, created by communities to meet local needs. Nobody should be prevented from having the opportunity to go to university if they have the academic potential. Funded by government and like any state school, free to attend. Over 350 free schools are now either open or approved. One of the things that I'm really looking forward to is opening the doors on the first day of term. The excitement's going to be just incredible, just intense. It already is, it's building, you can feel it. This is not a job, it's much, much more personal than that. We've all given a great deal of ourselves to get to this position. Free schools are being established by those with the expertise and the vision to open up a new world of education for the next generation. What we're all trying to do is improve the education of, of young people in this country and we should focus on that rather than on the old political battles. The journey is long and hard, but worth it. You have an idea, you fill in forms, you don't really see it in terms of human beings. When you see these little kids and their parents, it's very moving. Very moving. Set up by parents, teachers and charities among others, free schools have been opening their doors since 2011 and are now in every region of England. There are many types of free schools, from primary schools to sixth forms, special schools for students who have particular needs and alternative provision schools. Over 70% of free schools are in the most deprived half of the country. Dixon's Macmillan Academy opened in September 2014. Just two months before it started, the school invited its new students for a glimpse of the future. Good morning, class of 2021. Are we ready to learn? Yes, Mr. Parsons, we are ready to learn. Today is a university lecture. You heard this morning Mr. Davies talking an awful lot about climbing the mountain to university. Well, what we need to do, class of 2021, is think of today as the base of the mountain. Bradford is, you know, one of the poorest cities in the, in, in the country. I think it's in the bottom five. Half of our children come from the five poorest wards in Bradford. So, you know, um, the biggest challenge for us is around raising aspirations. And we've done that through having a focus on going to university. We're not saying that every child has to go to university. Um, we talk about climbing the mountain to university or a real alternative. For many of these students, they will be the first one in their family to achieve that. And at as well as that being their pinnacle, it's a pinnacle for generations in their family. And that's what's really exciting, exciting for them and exciting for us. While free schools are often set up in areas of deprivation, another key driver is simply the national shortage of school places. 90% of primary free schools are in areas with a predictive shortage of places. I mean, simply the birth rate. There is a national need for primary places. That's obviously fulfilling a need. As it happens, our uh, yet to start school has proven rather popular. I wanted to have a different opportunity, you know, something that's a bit fresh and a bit new and and a bit more relevant, I think, to be honest with you. Well, what, one of me is, is Greg's enthusiasm, you know, it's like it's a journey and, you know, you're going to be involved and I have really been involved. I thought the style of learning that they're going to offer I think it grab his attention a lot more. Now, put your hands up if you've been here before. I have. Lipper Primary School is going to open in September with two classes of the very youngest children. We're full for September. Parents have been extremely positive right from way back where we've done initial open events. I've been here six months since mid-January now. And what's nice is that I'm the first head teacher, the teachers are the first teachers but they're the first children and they're the first parents and they're the people who matter most. While providing additional places is important, new free schools are also addressing the reality of persistently low standards in parts of England. 
One such school is the New Island Free School in Ventnor on the Isle of Wight. There's a massive lack of trust in education on the island. The island has always lagged behind the national averages for success rates in GCSEs. Last year our GCSE results, 5 A's to C with maths and English, we were the lowest performing local authority bar one in the country. Yeah, we're also going to write the rules. Just two months before the school opened for the first time, parents and their children have been invited to an open evening. One of our aims when we set out to open the Island Free School was to make sure that we had really strong links with parents. We can do lots of things, without their support we can't achieve everything we want. The most successful way of advertising the school, Nigel and I spent a winter and a spring going to people's houses. Parents' concerns were all about um, uniform and discipline and happiness. More often than not, will my child be happy at your school? We decided to choose the free school because we just thought it was a fabulous opportunity for our child to be part of it. The other schools that are on the island, what with the Ofsted reports, the schools we don't think were good enough for our child, to be honest with you. Parents are the driving force behind every free school. They can only be set up if they can demonstrate that they're wanted by parents who have to show their commitment by signing up before the school even exists. With no concerns, we know that this school will succeed. Every morning when he comes in for school, I can't catch him, he's off like a rocket and he never shuts up talking about everything he's done. I thought it would give her the best opportunity to engage with the subjects that she was learning. I thought she might get lost in a normal school. I just bought into it, I just thought it's exactly what the area needed. As a parent, you want the best for the child. The teachers that are coming in here, they're passionate. The kids are purely there to, to learn, you know, other colleges that are criticising. You know, it's, it's the old, you know, don't throw stones in glass houses. Even when they're supported by local parents, free schools can still come up against opposition. We will be the first free school in Sheffield and uh, one of the first in South Yorkshire. It's an area politically that has been quite opposed to the, to the, to the free school's policy. I suppose for me that the free school programme has allowed us to open what we feel is going to be a, a wonderful new school. Whether you agree or not with the politics of that, I think is a different matter. It's given us an opportunity and we've taken it. We're all about trying to improve educational outcomes and we understand that free schools are a little bit of political football, but we're, we're not really interested in that debate at all. Ultimately, any mechanism that opens up more education that parents want and demand, and as long as the education is evaluated and monitored carefully, any, anything that improves standards in, in British education should be welcomed. Getting local support is a huge hurdle to jump, but on the other side is the Department for Education. Every free school is rigorously vetted in a multi-stage process. Today is our fourth meeting with the department. It's our readiness to open meeting uh, for the RISE free school, um, which is really exciting meeting for us. I think we need to go through a few things before we go in because I'm sure she'll have a lot of questions. So. They have been fair but very challenging um, which is good. It's all about everything we've been doing for the last two years and if we don't know the project now then <laughs> we're never going to know what we're doing. This is the the last check with the Department for Education. We'll discuss the developments in the project where we are now and what the next couple of months look like before opening in September. Welcome everybody, thank you for coming along. Today we've got about two hours for this meeting to talk to you about the report that you sent in so that we can determine whether you're going to be successful when you are open. Groups have to talk to local parents, they have to get local support, that's absolutely critical. But they also have to have a strong educational vision, a really detailed education plan, setting out their curriculum and all those kinds of things, what really is the essence of their school. And they have to have the right team in place, so the right people that can convince the Department for Education that they will be able to set up an outstanding school. People don't necessarily realise until they do it that putting together you know, a detailed, in our, in our year it was 150 50-page application form. It's a thesis-length document. Everything is assessed. So the meeting today really is the, the sort of final part of that and the culmination of all, all the work we've been doing together. Once they have the green light to open, perhaps the biggest challenge facing a free school is finding a site because every school needs a building. You're doing some uh... We're Some ground works are you then? Or? We're just doing the initial site investigation. Oh, right. uh, this is the entrance uh, where the parents are going to come through. 
Normally, uh, for your temporary build, you'd get a couple of officers and you'd rent them out. Uh, but what we did is we took that money uh, and we gave it to the Doncaster Rovers and they more than match funded it. When we move out to the permanent build, Doncaster Rovers Community Foundation will use this. This is our permanent premises. Uh, obviously at the moment it's still uh, a lorry haulage company as you can see. But this is where we're going to be uh, permanently from year two onwards. It wasn't easy uh, to get but um, now everything's done and dusted. We're, we're really pleased. It's a great space. Choosing a school for your child is always a momentous decision, but sending them to a brand new one, which may not have a building, requires even greater trust. So it's going into unknown, really, so it's something totally new. We had a few nerves because, because it only actually got cleared by the government and clearance in the last couple of weeks, so we were a bit worried. There's been lots of controversy about it, really. We went to all the meetings, you know, and everything that it stands for is what we want our child to do, you know. We're as excited as the children, to be honest with you. In the months leading up to opening, free schools have to work hard to introduce students to the kind of school they intend to be. Our first day of our summer camp is to introduce students to each other, so it's really about introductions and friendships being formed. We're the first people that get to look around school, get to know the school before anyone else does. It's like you've started a new school but it isn't because you're, you're the smallest but the biggest at the same time. We want to inspire them to be musical over the coming year and hopefully they're going to tell our other students about this trip and inspire them. It's very much about having a vision, seeing the talent and passion that's out there, seeing them coming in buzzing, ready to engage, ready to learn, and seeing how they're going to bring that shell of a building to life. Smile, relax and enjoy. Today's been about showing them Oxford, an aspirational, inspirational place. Hopefully it'll uh, live long in the memory. We got to do really epic stuff, like we just did the roller coaster. Basically it was just like a free day. I love it. Good morning. Are we all ready for a good day today? Good morning, how are you? After years of planning, seeing the children come into the school for the first time is a huge moment for the teachers and parents who have worked hard to make the school a reality. Although my wife had our child, it's like that. My God, it's here. I've gone through the day a hundred times in my head. It's really emotional, actually, really emotional, because they arrived impeccably dressed and there were, there were no issues, they lined up in silence, they came into assembly, quite emotive. The students make everything right. You can talk about all these things so much for weeks and weeks, as soon as the students are in, everything seems to fall into place. Never, ever give up. Free schools do not follow a one-size-fits-all approach. They have greater freedom around which subjects they focus on, the methods of teaching they use, and the length of the school day. They offer new choices and opportunities to communities and students who need them most, including special schools for children with special educational needs. We thought that the free school policy offered a fantastic opportunity to transform the life chances of children with autism. The children have been amazing, they've settled in so well. Um, when you consider it's a new school with new staff and all new children, nobody knows anybody, um, it, they're doing really, really well. I've been thinking all week about what to say to you as we start the school. So I'm going to say one thing. If you want to be successful in your life, you need to work hard. What we expect is absolutely perfect learning habits. When we ask for something first time, what do we expect? Every time. Again, first time? Every time. Thank you. I just wanted to say how proud I am of you as a set of young people. And remember, you're the first year group at XP, so you're the pioneers, you're the guys who are going to set that bar. Over 60 free schools have now been inspected by Ofsted and they've been judged to be more than twice as likely to be outstanding than other state schools. So the early indications of free schools that they're doing incredibly well, both in terms of delivering a top quality academic education for the pupils, but also they're proving extremely popular with parents. I'm not knocking traditional schools, but I think the way they've taught there has been very set the same bit sort of Victorian based if you like and they're coming home and they're doing something different every day and I'm just really impressed. The school has to succeed you know this island can't afford for this not to go well 
Um, we need a school to set a standard. I'll be, I'll be filled with pride, but also very excited and full of kind of hope for the future as well and what we're going to do to develop our young people into really beautiful people.